We certainly appreciate you sticking around for part two. And without any further delay, here we go. Fingers and all these holes trying to hold it back. There's going to be more holes than fingers. And then the whole thing begins to give way. What, and, and that's what we're waiting for. What role does the uh, SGE, I know that uh, on your recent uh, Max Kaiser interview with Andrew McGuire, uh, either one of you or both of you were talking about the, an arbitrage between yep. the physical uh, SGE market and the COMEX LBMA paper market. Exactly. And that, and that comes, that, that's, that's now in play, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the people say, well, you know, that's a fix. You know, there's Chinese banks involved and there's some Western banks. Uh-huh. Yeah, if you want it to be that way, you can. If you want to feel that way about it, you can. Uh, it's uh, the SGE. It's in Shanghai. Last time I checked, anything that's in China is basically controlled by the Chinese government, right? They right. give the illusion that maybe there's some, you know. But nonetheless, so anytime the Chinese government wants to break this system, they can do it through that Shanghai yuan denominated fix simply by kicking off that arbitrage because it, what it basically does, they set that price $20, $50, $100 higher than where the spot is trading in London. Then it would encourage a global arbitrage that speeds up and again, ends this whole game in that you would uh, take delivery. Uh, you got your paper market in London and you would take your physical metal from there after you take delivery and sell it into the physical market of Shanghai at a profit. And that's the arbitrage. It's paper in London that's backed with, you know, small amount of physical and that you have to, to capture the arbitrage. You got to take that physical and sell it in Shanghai. So yeah, the Shanghai gold exchange and the Yuan fix is a potential hammer. Uh, uh, think of it as, remember that game, Roy, where uh, you had it as a kid and it was like all those little plastic cubes in a square. And you could tap out a plastic cube and the floor would still stay stable. And you had to take turns tapping out a cube. And then finally you'd knock one out and the whole thing would <laughs> <laughs> uh, Think of uh, the gold market as that thing. And you're just tapping out all these little plastic cubes. The hammer ultimately may very well be that, that gold fix that just drops it on the floor and just blows the whole thing apart. Um, it, you're going to take out a cube eventually that blows it apart, but uh, this it is a very tenuous situation, and people just need to realize. Again, I'm watching gold trade. Just don't get caught up on the day to day because you just want to keep stacking physical, keep adding to your pile because eventually this pricing system is going to fail uh, sooner rather than later, and uh, it, gold's not going to be thirteen twenty one uh, at that point. What are, what are your thoughts as far as the Brexit and the impact on NATO and all of this U.S. eye-poking of Russia that's been going on for close to two years now? I mean, are, that, is, that has to, is that going to accelerate and the ICBMs start flying a lot sooner? Or is there going to be a backing off? In your opinion, just in your opinion, I'm not asking for a crystal ball answer. I'm just asking for your opinion. Uh, as you probably know, Roy, I've been following this closely now for two and a half years, uh, ever since the U.S. sponsored coup in Ukraine, and and it is only disintegrated, and it is horrifying, frankly, to watch what the U.S. led NATO effort has been to provoke. Russia. Okay. I mean, yes. look, I'm, I'm an American citizen, right? Me too. Uh, I'm not sitting here trying to say, yeah, I'm, I'm, look, it is, this is this the fact. It's okay. A fact. And we do everything we can to provoke them. Let me give you this. We made all these announcements that we were putting these battalions and we're going to be in, in coordinating exercises on the Russian border in Poland. Yep. <laughs> First time there have been uh, let's call it adversarial troops on the Russian border since World War II. And we make all these announcements on June 22nd, 2016. 
Well, what's the significance of that, Craig? Uh, June 22nd, 1941, exactly 75 years earlier, was the day Germany invaded Russia and killed 26 million Russians. Yeah, I mean, do you think that's happened by chance? And so, you know, the last thing, I, I just don't, I, I hate going down these roads of trying to assume everything's some kind of conspiracy theory and, you know, all, but look, you cannot with a objective opinion, look at the events of the last 30 months and not conclude that, you know, they might be trying to start something. So they have something to blame it all on. Exactly. This is frightening and unnes completely unnecessary. And we continue to act as if Russia is this grave threat to world peace. The grave threat to world peace is U.S. and NATO. So if breaking up the EU and all that kind of stuff breaks up <laughs> and ends their cooperation with the U.S. and this, man, I am all for it. All for it. Uh, Here's where I think the problem is, though, Craig. I think that... You know, when when rats get backed into a corner and they're trapped, they tend to they tend to fight and bite. Yeah. And I have to believe that the the new world order people and the and the one world one government people and the neocons, Hillary Clinton, for instance, they have to just be seething at this at this uh, result over in the UK. And my prediction is, I'm be interested. I hope it doesn't happen. I would not be surprised to see the U.S. militarism ramped up in Syria because that's really where they're fighting a de facto war with Russia right now. Yep. And that's what I, unfortunately, I think, you know, as history has, has told us time and again, that when you get large global economic convulsions and the, the previously hegemonic ruler of the world loses their power, they start a world war. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this transition of reserve currency status usually comes with a war too. Yeah, uh, exactly. And for, for people that don't follow this closely, um, let me put this in terms so people can understand how perverse all of this is. Okay. Everybody knows who ISIS is, right? They burn people alive and dip them in chemicals and all this crap, right? They're the nastiest, ugliest people on earth. Who is fighting and killing ISIS? It's the Russians. One would think if they are such a threat, you know, after what happened in Orlando and Brussels and Paris, that we would welcome anyone wanting to blow up ISIS and crush them in Syria and Iraq. Oh, no, no, we can't have that. And so instead, instead, U.S. policy is to arm something called al-Nusra, which is the opposition to Assad in Syria. Do you know who al-Nusra is? Another name for al-Nusra is al-Qaeda. Hey, gosh, let me think back for a second. Al-Qaeda, why does that ring a bell? Uh, I know my short, my attention pan, uh, average American attention pan span is pretty short, but I'm pretty sure al-Qaeda was who they told us, you know, did 9-11. We had to go get them out of Afghanistan. There was the really, really, this is Osama bin Laden. But now, because we're trying to paint Russia as a bad guy, we won't support them killing ISIS, and we're arming al-Qaeda. What? Well, the, 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 these creations, they're all creations of the CIA and the deep state. I mean, that's what's yeah. so funny about the whole thing. Yeah. And so <laughs> I mean, it's impossible to not look at this and go, wait a second. This is just, what is really going on? What, what are they really going on? And this is just outrageous. Can you imagine going back, just resetting the clock to uh, 15 years ago, you know, in the months right after 9-11, and the headline comes across, U.S. to arm al-Qaeda in Syria. <laughs> what? Yes. Are you kidding me? But that's what the, I, all of this, because, you know, Russia, they're, they're the bad guys, and they just don't have any other playbook. They had to have a boogeyman. They got to blame this collapse on somebody, and that's the direction we're going, and I'm afraid it's going to get us all killed. I am too. Well, on that happy note, huh, Roy? <laughs> oh yeah everybody have a great weekend yeah <laughs> exactly oh no that wasn't the uh that wasn't the intent it wasn't uh to, to introduce a bunch of gloom and doom i'm just curious as to with everything that's happening with the markets and everything being everything is rigged as we all know from 
all of these different uh, situations being in being in a court of law and, and people being found. I can't use the word guilty because nobody's in jail, um, but they've all been fined for various and sundry uh, riggings of markets. And, and now we have the Brexit to happen. And as we pointed out earlier, France, Italy, and probably several other uh, nation states in Europe are going to now abandon the European Union. And with this ongoing, as you pointed out, Craig, 30-month-long nightmare that the United States created through their neocon crazies, uh, this situation with Russia, I mean, it just seems like everything is extremely volatile at this moment. And nobody seems to notice. Nobody seems to care. I yeah. Mean, yeah, I'm afraid that the uh, Brexit, just like the situation with Deutsche Bank, just like the situation with LIBOR, Forex, all of these other massive acts of criminality, they go through their regular news cycle and that's it. They are yeah. forever down the memory hole and nobody ever goes back and revisits or tries to tie these things together. And it's just, it's, it's really kind of sad. I mean, it really is because they're all interconnected and these criminals that are now, they seem to be, as you pointed out, Dave, they're rats, they're backed into a corner. They're going to come out fighting. They're not going to let this thing go. They're not going to go down easy. And it's, we're in, we're in a lot of trouble. We are in a serious amount of trouble. And unfortunately, from my perspective, People aren't taking it seriously. No. Well, most people, you know, most, and, most and frankly, the only people I care about, I mean, if, you, if people are listening to us on this, they care. Yeah. You know, the people on that subscribe to my site, they care. Yeah. Those are the only people that I care about. You know, everybody else can go piss up a rope. It's all there in front of you. If you manage to pay attention, people say, oh, God, Turd Ferguson, he's just trying to talk his book and sell. What, what do I have to sell? I don't, I don't exactly. sell precious metal. What book do I have? I'm just telling you, after seven years of doing this 24 freaking hours a day, basically seven days a week, this is what is happening. And you can either prepare for this and try to prepare and save your resources, your investments, your financial assets, and your family, or you can just, you know, stick your head in the sand and stand on your roof when it all ends with a sign saying, save me. So, so listen, the time is now. Okay, this watch the European banks. They're all connected together through debt and then their currency is going to implode. I mean, this is not fixable. This is not fixable. fixable. And the demand for physical gold and silver is going to break this paper derivative system that's been in place for 41 years. Prices, which are already just grossly distorted because of it. Thus, the gold-silver ratio are going to change rather dramatically. And when you actually think it's, no, I guess maybe I should buy some gold, it's going to be too late. So please, everyone, understand the gravity of the situation. What happened overnight in in England is, like I said, just reaching down, grabbing the wheel, and giving it a big spin and speeding it up. This is not the time for dilly-dallying. This is not the time for just oh, reading your charts and all that kind of stuff. This is a time to prepare, and everybody should be using that time wisely. I like it. Let's go do some preps. <laughs> you got it, Roy. Hey, it's always good to talk to you guys. I Thank you very much for giving me the mic, and uh, uh, I'll try not to have so much coffee in me next time we do this. <laughs> Hey, Craig, thanks for your time. Hey, we only went 20 minutes over what we intended. <laughs> <laughs> that's a new record. I think that's my new personal best. <laughs> that's a victory. <laughs> uh, it's all good. And you can find all of Craig's work over at tfmetalsreport.com, where he's got both the subscription side and the forum, which is awesome. You can learn you can learn all kinds of good stuff that that we haven't even touched on. I mean... There's just a, a world of information in the in the forums. And uh, Craig, it's always a pleasure. Love having you on the show. Lots of life. Drink double the drink twice as much coffee next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be switching to something harder pretty soon, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of day. 
Well, all right. Well, we will talk with you soon, my friend. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Greg.